Hey, welcome to the Small Business Made Simple podcast, brought to you by socialmediaandmarketing.com.au. Being in business is never easy, but it can be simple, or at least simpler. Join me, your host Jen Donovan, every week where we focus on marketing, social media and working towards simplifying your business. You with me? Let's do this. If you're gonna dream it, dream it big, cause someone out there listening, everyone's got a voice to give and it's time I heard you whistling, cause there's no point at all, oh, 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 and dreaming small. Why, hey there, my amazing listener. Welcome to episode 286 of the Small Business Made Simple podcast. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for choosing your time to be spent with me here listening to this episode. And it is a cracker. I know I think all my episodes are crackers, but they really are. (laughs) This month, uh, if you haven't tuned in this month already, this month, the month of March, um, my podcasts are all being themed. The theme is amplifiers. So this month we will be talking about amplification. We'll be talking to experts uh, in the business world and all about amplifying your business by using different marketing strategies. I have some awesome guest interviews that I'll share and also just some gen solo episodes. This one happens to be a great guest episode. Each month, I hopefully, uh, if it works out, I will have a theme and that will help you navigating this thing we call business um, and keep you coming back to episodes as you need. For example, today is about podcasting and you might think, well, Jen, I don't really need to know much about podcasting at the moment, but you'll have a listen. And then when you're ready to know more about podcasting, you'll come back to this episode because you're like, she did a whole episode on amplification or a whole month one of them was podcasting. So this is the idea. This is one of the little ways that I'm trying to mix up the podcast in 2024. Of course, podcasting isn't just about hosting podcasts. It's also about being a guest and using podcasting to amplify your message, your business, your brand and yourself. But you don't have to host one to listen to this or to get the benefits of amplification through podcasting. So what is an amplifier, you might ask? Well, I just kind of gave it away, didn't I? It's things like speaking, podcasting, being a media commentator, referrals, writing books, creating lead magnets, et cetera, et cetera. Basically anything that amplifies who you are, what you do, and of course, what it is that you sell. It's basically how you attract people. So we are very much in the attraction model. When we look at business, we have a contraction model, we have a nurture model, we have a conversion model, and we have an ascension model. Today and in March, we're talking about attracting more people, amplifying our message, our business, our brand, and of course, ourselves. But before I get into this great episode, I want to tell you about a really exclusive brand new offer that I have, and it's my VIP marketing experience in a penthouse. Yep, I've hired the penthouse in the CBD of Melbourne for a whole day between 9am and 4.30pm, and I'm going to help you, should you choose to come along, get your marketing strategy done for a whole 12 months. So work out what your marketing strategy should look like, have a look at your sales rhythms, um, and really start doing your marketing as well. So there'll be a certain amount of time in the afternoon that's all about implementation. So it's actually scheduling out things, having a look, what assets do you need to build and start building those assets in accordance with your sales rhythms and also your goals for 2024. There's only six spots in this VIP marketing experience. And at the time of recording this, there is only four left. So it'll be very intimate. It's very fast paced and it's very action orientated. If you're keen to know more, you can go to my show notes at socialmediaandmarketing.com.au slash 286, or you can go to bit.ly, B-I-T dot L-Y slash V-I-P Melb, as in M-E-L-B. It's on Thursday, the 18th of April. It's in the CBD of Melbourne. Yep, the country girls coming to the city for an exclusive VIP day. And I'd love you to have one of my, I'd love to have you as one of my guests in the penthouse. Of course, while you're on my website, if you haven't got a copy of my book, Small Town Big Impact with 107 Simple Marketing Strategies in it, it's kind of like a marketing Bible, but you can grab one of those on my website as well. As I mentioned a little bit earlier, 
today's amplification is about podcasting and you might think that, you know, I'm the podcasting expert because I've been doing it for many, many years, actually over five years, but nope, I've got a guest. Her name is Kirsten and she's from the Rural Podcasting Co. And we're going to chat all things podcasting. Um, basically this is Kirsten's business. Kirsten, not only does she have a podcast called Ducks on the Pond and a bit of a side note to that, I was just recently on her podcast. So make sure you look up Ducks on the Pond and have a listen. Um, so ducksonthepond.com.au is where you will find that. But she also produces podcasts for other people. And she talks on this episode about monetizing your podcast and how to be a good guest on the podcast. She has some really great insights. And I'm so excited to share this episode with you. Kirsten, of course, will introduce herself very shortly. But I just wanted to say whether you're thinking of starting a podcast, and it's never too late to start a podcast, just a side note there, in case you're thinking, oh, Jen, I've often thought about it, but isn't it too late? No, it's never too late to start a podcast. Or whether you just want to understand how podcasting can amplify your message, your business, you even as a guest, then keep listening because this episode with Kirsten is absolutely fabulous. So let's go. Here's Kirsten. Kirsten, I am super excited to have you on the podcast today because we're going to talk podcasting with two podcasters who love podcasting. So it's going to be a great conversation um, and I can't wait to get into it. So first of all, though, I better say welcome and hello. Hello, it's so exciting to chat about podcasting. It's my favorite thing to talk about. <laughs> it's almost my favorite thing to talk about as well. So um, uh, for my listener, we will try and keep it under two hours. But no, just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it has to be very good to be to justify two hours. And I'm not sure if I can uh, promise that. So oh, look, I'm, I'm, sure I'm big we could, on keeping, but... <laughs> keeping a podcast tight. I'm, I'm very clear on that. Beautiful, beautiful. So we're here to talk about podcasting. So tell us a little bit about yourself, I guess, your experience with podcasting and a little bit about your business. Yeah, thanks. So I started Rural Podcasting Co. back in August 2023. So it's quite new, but I'm certainly mm -hmm. not new to the world of media. So I worked as a journalist for 15 plus years, mainly for the ABC. I worked in Sydney and Melbourne and um, also in Ballarat and Warrnambool and Bendigo as well. So I uh, live on a farm these days. So <laughs> I moved here about 10 years ago when I married my husband and I live west of Melbourne. So in a little town called Karamet, actually 10 k's north of a little town called Karamet, um, <laughs> which makes it feel really remote. But on my podcast, which is called Ducks in the Pond, I speak to women who live in rural Queensland and NT and it makes me feel uh, like, you know, I don't have that far to travel. 50 minutes to the to the nearest town is, is not so bad. Yeah. Um, but I, I love where I live. And so obviously you can probably hear there was a bit of a career shift for me that happened when I moved. Mm. I was a city journo, um, mainly for the 7 p.m. news on TV and also did radio. And I really loved it, but then also fell in love with a farmer. And so I had to navigate that career change. I had my children pretty, pretty soon after we got married. I had my first son and then I had another son two years later. And so I was very much in, in mum mode and just doing mm -hmm. bits here and there with the ABC for a few years. And then the world changed with COVID and actually really opened things up. That's when I started my podcast, Ducks on the Pond, and it also enabled me to kind of have nearly any job that I wanted, which wasn't available when I first moved. Like yeah, we only right. had, we had satellite internet when I first moved. It was actually a condition of me moving to the farm. I said to my <laughs> husband, I'm not coming here unless we have internet. And to his credit, he like got up on the roof, we're putting dishes <laughs> up and doing everything. But even still, you know, after 4 p.m. when the kids had come home, like when other kids had come home from school, you couldn't get on. It was like if I wasn't doing something at 1 a.m., I had no chance of mm -hmm. being able to use the internet. And then we got the NBN and that was amazing. Uh, and now I have, I think, <laughs> uh, Starlink, which is which is perfect. So there were, yeah, I, I knew my career was going to change dramatically when I moved here, 
but then the world reopened in a very different way, which just goes to show in life, doesn't it? Like you just don't know. Yes. Yeah, no, you just don't know what's around the corner for sure. It's very, um, yeah, and the world did change so much for so many people. But to go from journalism to podcasting, what what was the thing that made you go, I'm going to start a podcast, you know, I'm going to call it Ducks on the Pond, which I really do need to ask you where that name come from as well. <laughs> um, I've been lucky enough to be a guest on Ducks on the Pond. Um, so it's a podcast that I listen to because I love hearing other people's rural stories. But how did you go from journalism to podcasting? What was the light bulb moment that took you there? I've always loved long format storytelling. So I used to love, I worked on Stateline, uh, if you remember that program on the ABC and loved doing those sort of longer stories. And I would um, also put together um, pieces in my own time, this was pre-kids as a journo, um, on Bush Telegraph when I first moved yeah. out here, when yeah. I was dating my husband and I would get secondments out to Warrnambool and I would do, I would write for Bush Telegraph. Uh, and it was kind of like podcasting before mm. there was podcasting, or at least before it went boom, which yeah. was kind of, it, it's widely acknowledged that it was 2014 when Serial came out, it really went boom, but it, it emerged back in 2004. But that was, you know, when you were pasting RSS feeds into things <laughs> rather than having to just listen to it on your phone or or your iPod, which before mm -hmm. the smartphone came out. But I, so I loved long format storytelling, even though I was kind of always in that, that broadcast news world where you might only get a minute and a half to tell your story. And I just had this burning desire to tell stories for rural women by mm -hmm. rural women. And so Ducks on the Pond is co-hosted uh, me and Jackie Elliott, who founded Rural Women's Day. I pulled her in because I'd watched what <laughs> she was doing on social media and I went, ah, that's my audience. Uh, I was like, I know how to make content, but I need an audience mm. because before that I always had an audience. I had the ABC audience and I yes. didn't have to worry about building it. I mean, you have to obviously get people engaged, but when you've got a lot of people already plugged in and trusting you, it's not mm. that hard. So I really enjoyed that experience actually of building the audience. I'd never done it before and really had to get my head around marketing, which is what, what you do. But I, I just wanted a story. Uh, well, I just wanted a podcast that spoke to rural women because I found so many of those, you know, self-help or educational podcasts, whether it's about health or um, business or mental health, just didn't fit with your reality as a rural woman with young kids, whether you have kids or not, quite frankly, just being a rural woman, you know, mm. you're often juggling farm life, family life and weird hours. I was just tired and actually I reposted a really funny thing on social media the other day of this woman saying she's tired of the ice bath bros who, you know, have their routine and they're like, you know, get up at 5 a.m. and they go to the gym and then they junk themselves in the ice bath and they write these books and in these books they say, thank you, Susan, for helping me out and looking after the kids and cleaning and she's like, I want to hear from Susan, you know, how's <laughs> Susan doing it? Because that's what our life is. You know, when you're up four times with the kids that night or having to suddenly drop what you do to pick up some parts because it's harvest and it's all stopped and without you, it's not going to start again. Like where's, where's that story? No one was, no one was really talking about it at the time. There are some wonderful podcasts podcasts that have also emerged um, around the same time and since then uh, and since then that do that. But yeah, that's why I wanted to start it. I just wanted to have conversations from our perspective. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And funnily enough, just as we were logging on to this podcast interview, um, you know, my husband's texting me, where are you? Are you at home? You busy? I need a ride. I'm like, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, I can pick you up in about an hour if you want to just sit tight or find someone else to pick you up because it is, you know, um, I'm lucky enough I get to work from home, but you know, there is, it's just not that I sit here at the desk and get to do things. There are lots of other elements in my life that maybe I should share more often to let 
let people know, you know, what really does go on in a day. But, you know, I'm a farmer's wife and, you know, we've got three different farms in three different locations and people need rides from one to the other and this pulled there and that taken there. So yeah. But anyway, we're not here to talk about my farm life. <laughs> we are here so, to <laughs> so many people can relate though, like who are living that life and 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 if you don't live it, like yeah, you you can't see it. Like I remember yeah. what it was like before. I had a whole life before in the country where I knew nothing about agriculture, how farming worked. And you just don't even think about it when you live in the city. Yeah, no, I guess, I guess. Yeah, and that's why I guess, um, you know, so many homesteading Instagram pages are so popular because people are so interested in what uh, what does happen in everyday life. But podcasting is really what we're here to chat about. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, you know, you have a podcast, um, you know, I have one, I have a couple of podcasts that I've done. Um, I have another one that's tinkering around in my head. I love the medium because I find, you know, and, and I'm a, you know, certainly the person who scrolls through TikTok, I might stop and watch, I don't know, 10 seconds of a clip. I might watch a minute of a clip, depending on how interesting it is. But I don't sit there and probably watch the same thing for 30, 40 minutes and that sort of thing. Whereas podcasting, you can keep people's attention for that long. Um, and you can really, if podcasters are good, you can really feel that you're having that conversation with them in your head. Um, so it's such a powerful medium in my personal opinion. But if someone is listening and they're like, oh, I, I kind of, have thought about it a few times, but I'm really not sure where to start. Where would you recommend that they start if they're thinking about doing a podcast? Well, I think you've really got to want to do it mm -hmm. um, because it is a commitment. So I, I say that front, you know, first, and that's how I started my podcast was I really want to do it. And Ducks on the Pond, by the way, uh, before I forget, it means it's an old shearing shed saying from the 1800s and the men used to say it when a woman was approaching to warn the others so that they would uh -huh. behave appropriately, uh -huh. not swear, not say things you wouldn't say in front of the woman. So we've called it Ducks on the Pond as a kind of nod to, you know, conversations that, um, you know, we shouldn't be having, but we, we have anyway. It's, you know, sometimes I say, you know, ducks in the pond, it's not about baking scones or, you know, we actually talk about the things that we really talk about because I think sometimes there's this outside opinion and I was guilty of this as a city journalist years ago, thinking that like the country is just the CWA, love the CWA mm -hmm. and they're great, but, you know, like women talk about everything you know, we talk about everything, right? Yeah, and it's, absolutely. It's not like we're just <laughs> sitting there baking jams. Like some some people might be, but there are many women running amazing, success, successful six-figure businesses whilst yes. also farming or many women running farms or there's all sorts of amazing stories out there mm -hmm. of what women are doing. So that's the the idea of it. And we talk about everything from, you know, reproduction to yeah starting businesses but um going back to podcasting which is you know my my business rural podcasting co then grew from doing my podcast for a few years and really learning the business of podcasting in the process mm -hmm. so that is is why I thought I would love to help others start podcasts too so that's what I do I have a coaching service and I also have an agency service. So, you know, you can hire me and I might do the strategy for you or I might do the whole thing for you or just the editing or the storytelling, the scripting. But I do have another program for it and it's mainly for people who have small businesses that can't afford the money to, you know, just pop on a, on, on a podcast because it is costly because it you know, it's so time consuming, right? Like yes. it's, it's not, it's not a cheap thing for to outsource an entire podcast, but you can do it yourself. So that's what I, I teach people how to start a podcast or how to improve an existing podcast and how to grow it. So to start a podcast, the first thing I say is you've got to really want to do it. You know, you, you've got to have something that you want to find out about and I often say that podcasting it's more of a movement 
than anything else. Like you almost want to create change. Like that's just what I felt about. I wanted a platform for women that really reflects the diversity of of who we all are in, in the country where we have a space to talk freely about issues in the way that we do, uh, whether it's about, you know, periods, pelvic floors, abortion, starting killer businesses, and there's just no judgment. This is just, we talk about it. So have, have, have a movement because with a podcast, you're building a community just as much mm. as you are an interesting thing to listen to. So kind of think about that. And you might already have a community that you can tap into. And if you do, that's, that's great. Like if it's a podcast to sit alongside an existing business or organization, then you likely already have a community that, that you can then start to grow from. Mm -hmm. yeah. And in terms of starting it, like some practical tips, you know, I always say just, just start. It's going to be messy in the beginning and you have to be comfortable with that. You, it doesn't have to be perfect. Your 10th episode is going to be a lot better than your first and that's <laughs> okay. And you can start with not a lot, like you need a microphone. Uh, I won't budge on that. You you need a microphone. But other than that, you can use platforms that are for free, like there's Audacity, that's free if you wanted to edit using something that's free just to get started. Or there's some great programs that use AI now and they're the ones that I use. You know, and they might cost you $400 a year and a subscription. And I I love them because yeah, they, they make my life easier. They're, they're kind of quick to use. Yes, you have to learn how to do it, but it doesn't take that long. So yeah, yeah I think it's it's an investment in yourself when you learn how to how to podcast because then you also open up the world to networking. You know, you've got an excuse mm -hmm. to invite anyone that you want to meet on and spend half an hour, an hour, whatever it is with them because you're offering them a platform. And there's no better way of networking than offering something to someone, you know? So I, I think it's great on so many levels. Yeah, a hundred percent. I think that uh, it's opened so many doors for me purely from the networking point of view. I've got to, uh, I've actually got to educate myself really quite selfishly every now and then I get a guest on because that's the trouble I'm having in my business. And I get to ask them questions that I know that I want to know, but I know that lots of other small business owners would like to know as well. Um, but I kind of almost get like an hour free with this person that would normally cost me a couple of thousand dollars and they're more than happy to do it because you know, I've got a great audience, a great community and, you know, it's giving value to them and they're getting something from it. And so am I, but it's just opened, you know, friendships and collaborations and partnerships. It's um, certainly spectacular in that way, but it is a lot of work. Like you say, uh, when I started this podcast, so I'm in year six now of my podcast, um, I wrote 27 episodes or really I, that's a lie. I wrote 27 titles down of all the things that I thought I could talk about. And, you know, in there were a couple of people that I knew I could tap on the shoulder and say, you know, can I interview you, et cetera. And then I thought, well, we'll just do 27 and see how we go. Obviously that's, you know, 250 episodes or so ago now, but, um, you know, I just managed to keep going and I managed to still meet some great people and have them on my podcast. But you made an interesting point there because I've been podcasting for so long. You talked about AI. Do you feel that AI programs are making podcasting easier? And therefore maybe if someone hasn't started their, uh, I guess they're in is maybe a little bit easier than what it would have been five years ago when I started. Yes and no. So yes, in that the editing is definitely easier. So you can just... And the marketing. Do, and the potentially, marketing. Potentially, because they will break it up and snip it for you and all that sort of thing, potentially. Yeah. But the AI in that regard is still a little bit hit and miss. Mm -hmm. You know, like they'll create social posts for you, but it won't be written particularly well often. Mm -hmm. um, the transcripts are very good, very handy. They've improved a lot over the years. But I think it's harder in that 
Podcasting now has changed from really just being about the audio, about the listening experience, but now so many people also want to either watch it on YouTube or, you know, you really have to find your audience through social media these days. It's really hard to get recommended via your podcasting, you know, like Apple or Spotify, whereas yes. you used to be able to be found quite easily. Now, because there are so many podcasts, it's harder. So social media is really important in marketing your podcast. And of course, it's visual. So now the pressure's on to have that visual thing that goes alongside your podcast and finding your listeners and then converting them over to podcast, um, to the podcast world. So that I think has made that harder because I would happily just stay in audio land if I could yeah but I know that I've got to yeah front up on on social media too and learn those tools to do that but again AI is making it easier but it's just this this other layer that yeah. wasn't there before Mm, yeah, I did. Uh, I've actually just connected my RSS feed to YouTube. YouTube have just inter, um, in, introduced that you can do that. So because I think YouTube listeners in the US are outweighing Spotify listeners in the US. So they're still just listening. They're not actually, but YouTube are just making that big buy. They want that extra audience. They've got the lookers. Now they want the listeners, which is, um, yeah, I guess what big companies sort of do. So that's really interesting interesting way of looking at it so it's it's maybe the process is easier but getting listeners maybe has um you know got harder if you haven't already built that community or got that community that uh podcast listeners because obviously you don't want to go start a podcast if your audience aren't podcast listeners um yeah because otherwise you're just doing something that's not going to work not sure who aren't podcast listeners but um there's still lots of people out there I guess that yeah. And haven't found the love of listening to podcasts as they walk or they drive or make dinner. Well, it's it's funny though because podcasting is growing year on year in Australia and in terms of percentage of listenership, Australia has now taken over the US. So we are the highest podcasting like country wow. in terms of percentage of population listening. I think it's around 43% listen to podcasts regularly. So, and, and look, it does skew younger. So it's Gen Z and Gen and, and millennials uh, are listening the most, but it is growing in um, Gen X certainly and, and the boomers as well. It's growing as, you know, so I think podcasting is becoming more mainstream and accepted. And I think for marketing too, in particular, it's seen as another tool like mm. I, I kind of was reflecting the other day that, you know, we're all expected to have, say, Instagram and Facebook and, you know, if you're not there, you're like, well, what are you doing? Podcasting isn't there yet, but it's becoming more so, you know, like that you'd have a podcast now. It's almost becoming expected like you would have Instagram, which mm -hmm. I think is quite interesting. And I, yeah, don't know what mm -hmm. that will do to the space. Um, but I, and when I say that though, when, when, you, when we go back to starting a podcast, the big thing that you need to kind of combat is overwhelm. And you gave a really good example, Jen, before about how you thought, okay, I'll just do 27 episodes. So I just told myself, I'll just do a season. And that season was 10, you know, see how it goes, just test the audience, what's happening. And I think you've got to do that just mm -hmm. Tell yourself, you know, I constantly lie to myself um, to get me to do things <laughs> because I don't want to commit the rest of my life to something. But I did the first 10 episodes and watched it grow and it was exciting and I loved it. And I thought, right, I'll, I'll go again for another season. And I still do it in seasons to give myself a break so that I can also have a bit of a lead up where I do lots of interviews and then I start releasing. And so I can get ahead of the mm. schedule a bit to take the pressure off because I have done midnight edits in the early days. And I was like, no, this is not, this is not what I should be doing. Because I, again, I made that commitment to releasing 
for me, it's um, Thursdays uh, every fortnight and I would never miss a deadline. So the only time I missed a deadline and I had to release Friday mornings because I had COVID and I was super sick. So, <laughs> you know, and it's funny, it was self-imposed, but I'm again, that's just another tip. You've got to show up consistently. So you can yeah. do seasons. Your audience is allowed to miss you. But when you say you're there, you've got to be there so that they build that routine and build a habit of listening to you because, you know, they, they're they doing something too. They're listening to you and giving you their time while they go on their walk or go on their drive. And if you can build that into that routine where they almost associate, oh, great, I'm going for my 6 a.m. walk and Ducks in the Pond is dropping today. Like you're mm-hmm. in their Thursday lineup. That's what you want. That is yes. the goal of a of a listener. And that's gold. Like that's marketing gold to sort of do that. Absolutely. And I think that's a really good point. I'm glad you brought it up because, you know, I've been podcasting for over five years. Every single week I show up uh, on a Thursday, my episode drops. So I'm buying for attention with ducks on the pond. Um, <laughs> Go for morning. a long walk. <laughs> <laughs> but that's okay. Um, and... Yeah, but you don't have to do that. You could do it for, you know, you can do a season. You can do it. I know um, Lyndall used to do a podcast only um, during the school term. So she always had the school holidays off. Like you can really make it around your business. You don't have to show up every single week like I do if that doesn't fit your business model or if that doesn't align with, you know, how you want your business to play out. And it's not always about you. It is actually about your audience. But I love, you know, as long as you tell them, like you said, then they will respect that. And, um, you know, there won't be any issues. Like I've been late a couple of times and I've had people message me. Are you okay? I haven't got your episode. And, you know, a couple of times like, oh, I'm on holidays and clearly something has gone wrong in the scheduling in the back. Let me have a bit of a look. And, um, you know, something, a piece of tech has not worked for me or something like that. But, um, yeah, I think it's interesting to sort of discuss that and realize that you don't have to, you can work it, you can have a podcast and work it around yourself. Um, it's interesting you were saying how people, the expectation is perhaps that there'll be a lot more podcasts because, you know, people are sort of wanting that extra medium, which is the listening medium. Um I'd love to just have a a chat with you about monetizing a podcast. Like what does that look like for you? Because it doesn't have to be something you do free. You can actually monetize it. Um, So what's your experience there or what have you seen others do to help monetize their podcast? Yeah, there's lots of different roads and it changes as the landscape changes, like anything (laughs) marketing in this digital world. So there's a few main ways. Um, So there's, advertising. So you can, you know, insert ads and um, most of your podcasting host apps will like, you know, like your Buzzsprouts and Podbeans have dynamic ad insertion. And so you can put in an ad, it could be, you know, mid-roll in the middle of a podcast or at the start uh, or at the end. So you can do ads and some will offer you ads from, you know, other companies. So like Buzzsprout, for instance, has a program where if you've got enough listeners, you can uh, put, they suggest an ad to you and you can approve it and and pop it in. Now you have to have a lot of listeners to make money from that, to be honest. So great. If you've really got a lot of listeners, then you can. What do you call a lot of listeners? Are we talking thousands, tens of thousands? Are we talking just hundreds? Well, if you if you've got thousands, you're still only going to make, you know, fifty to a hundred dollars a month um, through that kind of a scheme, which you know it, I don't think that great. For you have to always weigh up: do I want to give my listeners ads? I much prefer for the smaller podcasts, which most are sponsors because then you know you're getting your niche um so you can charge more for sponsors when you know you really dominate an area and again when you're starting out in podcasting think about what your niche is it might be your area of expertise or your area of just absolute passion and you're on this kind of mission and movement to find out more about it 
whatever that is, then you've got a marketing, you know, you've got a market there. So for me, that's rural women in Australia and New Zealand. That's who I mm-hmm. speak to. You know, the, the numbers are limited. You know, how many rural women listen to podcasts in Australia? Like I, I've got a kind of cap on my growth no matter what, but I yeah. have a niche. And for businesses who want to speak to that niche, then that's gold, right? So mm. you can you can charge m- more for that and, and also give someone more of a bespoke kind of offering. Like you might say, you know, um, you can, you might even interview them for a few minutes or you might, um, you know, make an ad for them um, or you might say, okay, package it and include, um, you, you know, coverage on your social media or blog or newsletter or whatever as part of the package. So you can do do it that way. I've, I've mm-hmm. found a lot of podcasts getting success with that. Mm-hmm. Again, especially the the smaller ones with a well defined niche. Then you can, and, and of course, with that, analytics will give you that sort of information. So you can find out most of your podcast hosts will give you kind of breakdowns of where your listeners are. Mind you, they'll put your listeners in in city areas rather than country. <laughs> like, so very frustrating. Yeah, I, I know that most of my listeners are not really in Melbourne and Sydney. They're in <laughs> Victoria and New South Wales. <laughs> They're yes. not in the cities. So, and, and they'll give you, you know, gender breakdowns and, and that sort of thing. So that's really useful that you can then, you know, create a, a nice sponsorship prospectus and and offer that to businesses. Another way of monetizing is memberships, subscriptions. So if your podcast really falls in that movement category and you know that people are just going to come with you on it and really want to support you, then offering them sort of exclusive access to you. So it could be that you have ads for uh, people who are listening from outside and then you have membership, you know, you get to listen ad free. You might have some bonus content for them. You might have, um, you know, 10% or 20% off products that you that you have. So you can monetize it that way as well. And so that there's Patreon uh, and a few others that allow you to do that. And there's also, um, you know, Apple has now launched its subscription base model as well Mm -hmm. so you can do it through apple but then to do it on spotify you'd have to do that separately it's it's a bit of a murky world right you know because patreon you go patreon's great and it's been around for a while it does what it does really well but it makes people have to take another step and kind of sign up with patreon and find you there in apple you're like great i'll just go into apple it's it's done If, if you're an apple listener which which I am but keep in mind that it's Spotify and Apple uh you know neck and neck but Spotify is now beating Apple in terms of um <laughs> the listeners and now that YouTube is kind of coming into the yeah. race as well so mm-hmm. you know Apple you're only going to get people on who, who find you through Apple and it just makes it yeah a bit messy and Apple also wants currently 30 percent of your membership income for the first year and then it's 15% onwards and that's a lot compared to others Mm, and it's a lot for a small business owner who is trying to make money out of their content and out of their podcasts so yeah there's lots of things to weigh up but yeah they're really interesting thank you so much for sharing um you know your wisdom on you know how to make money from your podcast um of course you know putting your own things in your podcast like you know the courses that you sell and getting them for me I've my podcast i I really am trying to encourage people to just take one more step deeper into my world because listening is quite passive. I listen to a lot of podcasts and I, you know, to get me to take the next action to go and maybe join their Facebook group or to have a look at their course they're selling or, you know, to join their membership or whatever, like that's a big leap. Uh, And so it's that consistency, I guess, of reminding people that, you know, how they can come just that little bit deeper into your world. And then maybe the sales messages can sort of come from a different avenue as well. So um, yeah. But it depends on what you want for your podcast. Not everyone wants to sell things through their podcast. Some podcasts are for the fun of it or informational and that's okay as well. 
Yeah, exactly. And for me, Ducks on the Pond was always like started because I wanted to. And now we have sponsors and that's great. And that helps it stay sustainable. Uh, it's not a huge money-making exercise for me at all. It's still very much for the love, but I, you know, I have monetized it in, in a way, but I suppose now you could almost say it's somewhat of a, a marketing tool in that while I'm not there selling to you, I'm, I'm just telling good stories. Um, mm. You know, rural women is who my audience is. And, you know, who do I work with mainly? Rural women. I do work with men. I've got two male clients, but the rest I can tell you now are all women. Yeah. So that's, that probably helps in that, in, in people getting to know me and building that trust, which is what happens when you listen to podcasts. You get to know someone yes. by listening to them and and know what they're saying is is true and that they're an authentic kind of a person. They're mm -hmm. not some kind of random that you see on Instagram telling you that they're going to make you, you know, <laughs> Earn six figures in, in 30 days oh, exactly <laughs> I just when I see that now I'm like no I just I just can't it makes me yeah. so angry mm -hmm. um but so I think podcasting is is great for that and it's all about where it sits in your value ladder which is something I'm sure you talk about all the time and I think often podcasting sits really early on in the ladder when it when it's a public podcast that is when it's listening for everyone I think that's, it's really just an opportunity to talk about things in your niche and, and not to sell uh, so mm. much, uh, but just to, to have good, interesting, useful conversations to show people that you know what you're talk about, talking about, you're passionate about it, and they can just get to know you without that hard sell. So that, that absolutely is a podcast, uh, like a justifiable way because you might make your money out of all of the other things, like whatever yes. whatever your business is, that's where yeah. the money is probably going to come in yeah. rather than the podcast. That mm. said, like I do have some clients I've worked with that have had success with um, having offerings that you can download. So a small amount of money to then get the, you know, the how-to kind of thing. Uh, so it's and not so much products, but... Um, it might be, you know, how to run your home home office or tips on using something and they have downloadable materials that they place in their show notes and have um, one of those, you know, Shopify type things going on so that people can purchase. And, yeah. and, and they've had some success. Again, I, I wouldn't say it's a huge money-making exercise, but mm -hmm. yeah, there, there, are, there are many ways that you can monetize a podcast or keep it as a marketing tool as part of that value ladder that you offer. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And look, you know, um, I've, I've paid to be on a podcast before. Um, so, you know, there is some podcasts out there that you have to pay to be on the podcast. Um, it was a little bit different. She came to where I live and you know we sat face to face and we did the interview it wasn't like I paid to chat to someone over zoom I'm not sure how I would think about doing that but it was more about creating that personal relationship and that was a really strategic decision by me to do that because she had my audience I wanted in on that audience and um you know that was a way of getting in to that audience so you know it was sort of like yeah. a win-win situation so there are opportunities for people to be able to, you know, make money from charging people to be interviewed. You and just need a I, good... I do that for, so my seasons, no one's, no one's, you know, paying to come on. Uh, I want full editorial control <laughs> and I, and I have sponsors um, for, I have episode sponsors and you can get um, season sponsors. If you can get one of you, you know, you might be able to get a bigger organization or company that aligns with your audience to, mm -hmm. to sponsor an entire season. At the moment, I've got mainly sort of small business women who sponsor single episodes. Mm -hmm. um, and then in between seasons, I'll, I'll do often do a, a collab series, one or two, and that's where someone has paid me. And again, I always make sure that they are someone that aligns with my brand. They've got to be a rural woman. They've, you know, mm -hmm. got to have something to say. And we sit down and I sit down with them and we work out, okay, a series on how to, how to do it. 
and yeah. what we're going to talk about and and I put it all together and release it over Ducks in the Pond and they can also have it themselves. I can pop it on their website or or whatever and, and so I make money through that. But again, I've got some pretty strict because yes. I like having editorial control and I, I want to always make sure I give my audience a good listening experience. So, yeah, that that's another way that I've been able to just generate a little bit of money as well. <laughs> yeah, great. Thank you so much for sharing that. That's super interesting. Um, this has been a really interesting conversation. I hope that my listener is uh, you know, a little bit curious or a little bit more curious about podcasting. Clearly they listen to podcasts because they are listening to us talk about podcasting. Um, and, you know, maybe they need to look into whether or not, you know, you, you talk about, you know, the value ladder, I would talk about their product architecture, you know, where does it fit in in their <laughs> product architecture sort of thing is podcasting something that will work for them from a either a, um, a money-making thing or you know a marketing sort of uh, I, I guess strategy so yeah interesting sort of points either way yeah. but is there anything that we haven't sort of touched on that you'd like to touch on just before we wrap this one up only that you can also have internal podcasts which I think is yeah. fantastic for you know, private groups, or perhaps it could be an offering that you have, perhaps you have um, a service or, or a membership for whatever it is that you do. Mm. And you can offer them a podcast. And I mean, for instance, I, I have a business coach who really helped me establish my, my business, uh, because, you know, content creation is, is my happy place and, and podcasting, but not necessarily how to, how to make a viable business. So I, I've got a coach and I'm loving that experience, but she's got a, a five minute podcast every Monday it comes out. It's just for us, her, you know, 20 or so coaching clients and it's great. And it really invigorates me for the, for the week. I listen to it every Monday awesome. and I'm like, great. And it just gives me something to reflect on and think about for my business and get me in that right frame of mind. So fitness would be a great one. I always think, you know, for an internal group one, you know, get you in that frame of mind, or it could be something like, you know, information that is you, you, you would pay for. So it could be investor insights or business insights, or you could use it as a tool for larger organizations to help get to know each other or get across a, a topic. You know, I know large organizations that might even be across the country or the world who use podcasting as a way to introduce new people to the team. Uh, create community. Create community, exactly. Mm. Or I did a podcast recently for a large organization on on sort of sustainability and climate change and greenhouse gas emissions so that other parts of the organisation that were working, um, you know, not necessarily at the coalface of, of that, but supporting, you know, it might be an IT or legal or HR, could kind of understand the main operations of the business by listening to a, a podcast series uh, that we did on it. So, and it was for their, you know, 400 or so global staff. So it can be used as a community and communi communication tool as well mm, as interesting yeah something that that makes money it's it can be a, it can be a lot of things I think think of podcasting not as radio you know I come from a radio background and I still do radio on ABC I um, do the conversation hour once a fortnight and the way that I approach radio is different to podcasting podcasting is about building a little community an imagined community and radio Radio's got this whole broadcast thing. It's 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 just slightly different. It's not the same thing. You want to yeah. come in with your niche and your movement, and that's what it's about when when it's yeah podcasting. Mm, interesting. Thank you. Um, and look, yeah, internal podcast. That's really interesting as well. Um, yeah so many things to think about. Thank you mm. so much. Um, if my listener is keen to get in touch and learn a little bit more about what you can offer through podcasting services, where's the best way to catch up with you? I'm on Instagram, so Rural Podcasting Co. And I'm also, uh, obviously my website, you can contact me there. Um, yeah. So I'm. So your website you... is the Rural, Rural Podcasting Co? Yeah. Just ruralpodcastingco.com. So you can find me there. And I'm, I'm really proud that I've created a business that 
really is flexible enough to to fit in with whatever people need because that's another kind of gap I saw in the market was that mm-hmm. most most small businesses can't afford you know to just drop 20k on a someone outsourcing a podcast so yeah. it's a so that's why I thought oh, I can teach people how to do it or you can employ me to do just part of it that you're struggling with um so yeah I think the podcasting world has has changed in in terms of its infrastructure and and how things are done and there are some older podcasting companies there that I don't know they they um (laughs) not moving with the times they're not moving with the times and, and I'm not sure if you're getting the service that that fits with with them anymore because like I said AI can do a lot of things for you these days that you don't necessarily have to pay a lot of money to you know be hosting a podcast or uh, editing a podcast there are things that you can do yourself or Mm -hmm. do a lot quicker with someone who knows how to use the tools yeah yeah absolutely and full disclosure you know I edit all my own podcasts I learned I didn't know how to do it but uh, you know and I've learned over the times and now I've learned how really not to edit like you know just let the podcast flow you know unless I am doing something that will affect the poor person's hearing like sneezing or coughing into the microphone or something like that they're the things I'll edit but really if I stuff up or I stumble on my words or whatever that's the way I'm going to talk if you're face to face with me. So that's pretty much how I show up on my podcast these days. So um, yeah, you can do it either way, but this has been such a great discussion. Thank you so much for coming on the podcast. I super appreciate it and look forward to catching up with you again really soon. Thank you, Jen. I've loved chatting to you. Um, Yeah, it's been an absolute pleasure. So thank you. Perfect. Thank you. I really hope you enjoyed that chat with Kirsten and uh, took away some gold from it. Her insights into podcasting were really fabulous, I thought, and I took some notes on things that I think I could do better, especially from a business perspective. Um, Even though I've been podcasting for over five years, there's always something to learn. Um, Now, Kirsten's links for her website, LinkedIn, Facebook, Instagram, and her podcast are all in the show notes at socialmediamarketing.com.au slash 286. But I'd love to know, what did you take away? What did you take away from that episode? Um, send me an email, send me a DM, jump on into Like-Minded Business Owners, my Facebook group, and let me know what you took away from that episode. Like I said at the very start, I have some great episodes coming up in March all around amplification. Um, And so I'd really love you to click that subscribe button if you haven't already so you get notifications because there could be more than one a week. I've got some great guests and some great information I want to share with you too. And I'm not sure I can fit it all into four weeks. (laughs) So there might be additional episodes coming up. Um, Otherwise, you, if you're on my email list, of course, you will find out those as well. If you're not on my email list, then go, go jump, join up, um, you know, download one of my freebies off my website and get on my email list that way. Um, but that's it for episode 286. I hope you found it valuable. And if you did two favors, potentially, if you could take 30 seconds out of your day to leave me a rating or a review, if that's possible where you are listening and maybe share it with a friend who you think maybe you've discussed podcasting with before, either being a guest or starting a podcast with them. And, you know, they might be really interested or there's another episode that you think that they would be interested in. I'd love for you to share it with them. Again, I'd love you to come in and join in my online community um, of like-minded business owners. Um, That would be sensational. The link is in the show notes. And just before I leave, did you get a chance to listen to last week's episode? Because it was about using social media as an amplifier. It's definitely worth a listen if you didn't get there already. Otherwise, I'm going to see you next week here on the podcast for episode 287. In the meantime, if we're not hanging out on social, please come and find me. I'm at Jen Donovan. Jen has two N's. Uh, Just about anywhere you can find me. And I would love to interact with you on social media as well. But whatever you do, remember my small business peep. As my opening song says, there is no point in dreaming small. No time like a present. Tell I can feel it. Say it proud. Be true and let us see you for the star that you are.
I would like to acknowledge the traditional custodians of the land, the Yorta Yorta people, on which I record this podcast and conduct my business today and pay my respects to their elders past and present. I extend this respect to the Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people here with us today as well.